1974 was the year the veteran freedom fighter and one of the Kapenguria Six, Kungu Karumba, disappeared. Karumba was last seen in public on Madaraka Day, June 1st, shortly after coming back from a business trip to Uganda. A fortnight later, newspapers reported that he had gone back to Uganda and had mysteriously disappeared there and was presumed dead. With no concrete information about Karumba's disappearance, most Kenyans came to accept the story put out by the Kenya government and newspapers that Karumba had been killed in Uganda by highway robbers or by Ugandan soldiers with whom he was said to have had differences over business matters. His body had reportedly been disposed of by being thrown into the River Nile or into Lake Victoria. Kenyans would never learn any more about Karumba's disappearance. In July, shortly after Karumba's disappearance, the ruling Kenya African National Union Kanu Governing Council decreed that only former opposition Kenya People's Union KPU members, now back in Kanu, who had been out of detention for more than three years, would be allowed to run for that year's general election. This had the effect of locking out most senior ex-KPU leaders from Luoland, including ex-KPU President Oginga Odinga. Odinga and others had been released only in 1972. That's how things stood as Kenyans went to the polls on October 14th. Five years earlier, the voters had thrown out 50% of sitting MPs. This time, they would be even harsher. 88 MPs, or nearly 56%, were rejected, the most spectacular defeat in the elections being that of Foreign Affairs Minister Njoroge Mungai by hitherto little-known Johnston Muthiora for the Dagoretti seat. In that general election, 29-year-old Chelagat Mutai was the first Kalenjin woman to vie for Parliament. And when she was elected MP for Eldoret North, she became the youngest person in independent Kenya to be elected to Parliament. In the new government that President Jomo Kenyatta formed, he retained Daniel Arap Moy as Vice President and Minister for Home Affairs. James Kishuru stayed on as Minister for Defence. Mbiu Koinange at the office of the President as Minister of State for Administration. Mwai Kibaki at Finance and Economic Planning, Jackson Angaine at Lands and Settlement, and Charles Njonjo as Attorney General. Kenyatta appointed his first Maasai, Stanley Oloi Tiptip, to the Ministry of Natural Resources. He elevated Kanu Acting Secretary General and former Assistant Minister in the Office of the Vice President, Robert Matano, to take over the Ministry of Cooperatives, which had at one time been held by Ronald Ngala. And he appointed Munyo Wayaki, Foreign Affairs Minister, to replace Joroge Mungai. Kenyatta would also appoint Kenya's first woman Assistant Minister, Julia Ojambo, MP for Funyula, in the Ministry of Social Services. But he would drop a number of former assistant ministers for their radical political stances. Among them, Martin Shikuku, Charles Rubia, Burudi Nabwera, and J.M. Karyuki, who had managed to retain his Nyandarwa North seat with a huge majority, despite the government banning all public meetings during the election campaign. The third parliament convened for the first time in December, but after re-electing Frederick Mati as speaker, it got hopelessly deadlocked over the proposal by backbenchers of Jean-Marie Saronet, the MP for Tinderet, as Marty's deputy. Kenyatta prorogued Parliament when the stalemate could not be resolved. Parliament would not meet again until February the following year, and when it did, the backbenchers had their way. Saronet was elected deputy speaker. 1974 was the year Kenyatta laid the foundation stone for the Western College of Arts and Applied Sciences. The college would later be renamed when it was upgraded to the Masinde Muliro University of Science and Technology. On the industrial front, 1974 was the year the Kamburu Hydroelectric Power Station on the Tana River was commissioned. 
In sports, the year saw Joginder Singh, partnered by David Doig, win the Safari Rally. It also saw Mary Ondieki, driving with Pamela Onyango, become the first African women to participate in the Safari Rally.